After five days of grinding, I've officially completed my build. I got the attributes and the badges. I'm ready to finally bring him online, but only after I complete my last game of my career. Because you guys wouldn't believe how addicted I've been to this game. If you go to City MVP and you look at the main quest here, if you get a million MVP points, you get the penthouse and the zip line. If I get MVP and rookie of the year, I will be really close to getting the penthouse. On this video, I'm gonna be showing y'all the build I'm using, the jump shots I've been using, and uh, I've maxed out my players. So hopefully I can save you guys some time on the grind. I'll be dropping all the tips that I've been using to get all my badges. First of all, subscribe to the channel. Do that. I'm uploading daily on this channel, bro. Subscribe. Join the Nets. That is my best tip I can give you guys on my career. Because on every other team, I'm getting so many reports of like the AI is hounding you. But when you play on the Nets, like there's Harden, Kyrie, and KD. You can't guard all of us like that. But anyway, this is the stats of my player. He's about mid-weight, 229 pounds, mid-wingspan, six foot six wingspan, and he's six foot six height. I went with a small forward 19 defensive badges 17 playmaking 32 shooting and 20 finishing he's at 95 overall right now apparently on next gen you can't lose once you get to 99 you can't lose it so that's pretty cool but anyway i'm well on my way to getting to a 99 this is what my attributes look like right now my build is technically called a two-way scoring machine the reason i created this build was i didn't want like a great all-around build that's what i went for in previous years this year i wanted a build that if i wanted to play comp pro-am i don't need to borrow someone's account i could just use my player i have a two-way wing player so the defense on this build is spectacular it's over 90 i've yet to max out the perimeter the steel is great and you guys know steals is overpowered this year so i will be abusing that i made sure the playmaking was just good enough so i can get those tier three playmaking animations and of course you know what i'm saying i'm a shooter at heart so my shooting has to be above a 90 and here it is the only regret i have with this build is i probably should have just reduced my block and added a driving dunk even if i had like a 50 or a 60 it would have sufficed that's my only regret, so I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this build is perfect, but if I did put it in a competitive setting, I don't know, maybe I might wanna investigate some competitive in 2K22. I'm not gonna break down the badges too deep because it's not necessary. I will tell you the ones you wanna max out first if you guys wanna expedite your grind on my career. Acrobat, when it comes to the finishing layups, is elite. The second you can get Hall of Fame Acrobat, get Hall of Fame Acrobat. When it comes to the shooting upgrades, there's two main ones you wanna get. The first one is Corner Specialist on Hall of Fame. NBA 2K Lab put us on notice years ago when they first started doing their research, but you get boosts just from sitting in the corner. You actually don't need corner specialists to get boosts. Just getting the badge though does help significantly. So even if you don't want to go with corner specialist, shooting in the corner does help you get those shooting upgrades way simpler. So max out corner specialist on Hall of Fame, catch and shoot on Hall of Fame, and just do catch and shoots in the corner. When it comes to playmaking this year, I'm hearing a lot, a lot, a lot of good things about quick chain and of course, quick first step as high as you can get those. So quick first step and quick chain are gonna be the two main badges you wanna focus on. On defense, personally for me, because my character does have a high steal rating, I got my pickpocket at gold. I really wish I got my steal to 90 so I can get that Hall of Fame pickpocket. But I'm, I mean, it don't make sense how much steals I'm averaging right now, I, but I'll get into all of that. I actually am very conveniently on my final game of my career, so I'll show you guys exactly how I got my badges. And assuming I do get MVP, I'm about to get a lot of MVP points after this game. I'm very excited, I've been waiting for this moment. Check this out. This this is what y'all want to do. On fast breaks, you want to pivot into the corner, catch and shoot, corner specialist will both light up. I heard Sniper's pretty good this year. So, I mean, I, we don't know how good until NBA 2K Lab does their test, but in my experience, getting those slightly lates and slightly early, significant differences the second I put on Sniper. So you will always be on the fast break. When you aren't on the fast break, what you want to do is call for the ball, kick it to the wing, get it back. That way, catch and shoot lights up, corner specialist lights up. Ideally, you want to be shooting greens, but when you don't have your badges, it will still be difficult for you to shoot those greens when you pass the ball to your teammate and then you catch it back sometimes the defenders back up like a little bit and it messes up their contest dramatically all right so let's say you want to pick up the ball at like the top of the three-point line don't recommend it but if you do this has worked in previous 2ks just doing this jab backs your defender up a little bit in my experience though this only started working for me once i already got my badges before i had my badges that opening was not enough for me to get greens it would still be slightly so when it comes to playmaking you want to click left on the d-pad scroll down to quick isolation everyone's gonna move out your way ideally the more attributes you have the easier this will be and then boom pick and roll action boom if you have a good big man, it makes this whole process significantly easier. Getting playmaking badges for me was kind of tough because I don't have alley-oop. So when it comes to the finishing badges, you want to do the same thing. Go quick isolation. You want to call for that pick and roll. Hezzy, sauce up a little bit. Boom, boost, and do a euro. 
and do a Euro every time. Bro, I'm telling you, if you guys get Hall of Fame Acrobat, you wanna let go of Turbo and double tap Square. If you're not Turboing and you double tap Square, you'll Euro. Bro, when I tell you every time it's a bucket, it was difficult for me to get my finishing upgrades because my character can't dunk. The second I started Euroing, it's automatic. For some reason, the AI never jump on Euros. And when it comes to defense, this one's hit or miss. Like it works like five or six times a game for me. Boom, just work right there. You just wanna sprint up and in the hand that they're dribbling the ball, click square and get one of those running steal animations. It works sometimes. Sometimes you miss and you get called for a foul. Don't do it every possession. But if you're feeling yourself, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, get yourself a steal. Also on defense, if you notice that like someone's driving your direction, you could play some help defense. Try and steal in that direction and get a steal just off track. I will though continue grinding this my career, my last game of the season. Look at this, look at this. Euro. I, I swear to God, everything goes in when you Euro step. And so that's it for my NBA season. Hopefully I just won a whole lot of awards. 50,000 new fans, that's great. And usually when an NBA 2K game comes out, I like to try all the jump shots that worked in previous years to see what changed. 2K saying this year they're gonna drop like seasonal animations, like dribble moves, but also jump shots. So I'm curious to see which new players they add into the mix. What I hope they don't do is like remove animations at launch and then reintroduce them, even though we've used them in previous 2Ks as seasonal content. So this is the the first jump shot that I use is on normal speed, Dwayne Wade base, tried and true, with a Derrick Rose release one and a Larry Bird release two. Animation blending is 75% Derrick Rose, 25% Larry Bird. I don't like using really fast jump shots because it just feels like too much RNG. Now that I've badged out my shooting though, I might try them out to see how they do. But this shot right here was straight money for me in the city games that I played. And it only took me like 10 minutes in the jump shot creator to come up with this, which is the craziest part. I feel like I kind of hit the jack jackpot with it, so I'm not even gonna mess around too much in the jump shot creator because I feel like I have my jump shot now. I have a second jump shot though. This one was more for my career, but you guys can try using it on the park. This is a slow release, 75% Derrick Rose, 25% LaMarcus Aldridge with a Dwayne Wade base. Something about that Dwayne Wade base is like, man, it's crack cocaine. I can't get enough of it. Now I say I wouldn't trust me with your dribbling information. And if for some reason you actually wanna see my dribbling animations or any, any of my animations really, they're all on this screen here. So you go ahead, pause it. It. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. The game is glitched right now. It says Nets. That's my last name. Three apostrophes. Crowned League MVP. We all MVPs in Brooklyn. Thanks for all the love. People couldn't have done it without you. But I ain't redeem my quest, though. I I'm supposed to get my 50,000 MVP points for this. I literally have to hit up support because that means this game is just broken right now. The city feels so much more alive this year. It makes no sense. See that all of the courts was full upstairs. The Gatorade facility here is packed. Every court you go to is easy to get games. So the purpose of this build really is to be like a secondary ball handler when necessary. I'm gonna learn how to dribble a little bit this year. At least do some generic dribble moves, you know what I'm saying? To get myself open and sometimes my teammates open. It's a two-way sharp with a good driving layup and tier three dribble moves. This is not a build you can take on the twos because it doesn't really serve a purpose there, but if I do play with this build, it's gonna be on the threes on park or on pro-am. I think it'll go crazy on pro-am because pro-am is about to be ran by lockdown defenders this year. I've been hearing so much about how lockdowns and spamming square and getting steals left and right if you don't have unpluckable this year. And apparently you have to be five foot nine or under to get Hall of Fame unpluckable. So you might just be victims this year if you don't know how to steal. It's weird because the game is not perfect. There's definitely some changes that could be made that could improve the game. But in our history of playing NBA 2K, we know those changes usually ruin more things than they fix. And the developers acknowledge that most people are happy with this game right now, even with its errors. So is it worth trying to fix it? But for what it's worth, even if they do patch stealing and make it significantly harder to do, this build still serves many purposes. Basically, I just don't wanna make a one dimensional build that's like the second something gets updated, it's now useless. Oh man, I'm actually having fun playing this game again. I never thought I could say that. It's been so long since I could reasonably say that, man. So I'll be hopping on streams and all of that, man. If y'all wanna catch it, subscribe to the channel. But if y'all already did that, man, make sure to go ahead and click this video right here where I maxed out my level as a rapper on NBA 2K22. We made a diss track against the game. It's a fucking fantastic side career, okay? Go click it, man. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.